Morning guys, and hey, I should say morning everybody. I was checking the old YouTube analytics last night and I got 2% female viewers to the channel. So hey, welcome you two. Uh, back here at the shop next day, 64 is on the trailer. Finishing my coffee. I'm gonna unload this here before I go to work. And the trunk's been locked too, so I'm gonna probably drill that thing out, find out what kind of uh, treasure is in the old trunk here uh, that has been sight unseen for at least 30 years. So I'm gonna finish my coffee. Do some car stuff, get this trunk unlocked, and get the car the 64 unloaded from the trailer. All right, guys, cool. I'll set this. My, I'll finish my coffee first, and then uh, get to unloading this uh, car. Hey guys, welcome back to the trailer here. Bob well, Wilson, as you can see, we got 64 in pounds. She's on the trailer. Mm, she's looking fine as a kitty in a shopping cart. I will tell you what. So probably maybe bust out some whiskey and. Maybe get me a little trailer and trailer into that trunk and see if we can find. So we got the uh, trunk lock drilled out now. Let's find out what's inside. 30 years locked in the trunk. Let's kind of see what's inside now that it's been drilled out. Uh, leave your comments down below if you've ever found anything cool inside the back of a trunk the first time you got into it. Uh, so here it is. This is the 30 year old reveal. What's inside the trunk after 30 years? Oh! Fan shroud, I can use that. Radiator. Actually, this might be good for my, my, uh, I got a 58 Biscayne. Might need a better rad. This might work good for it. Spare tire, that's always good. Some older clothes. Something big was inside here. Hard hat. Mouse nest. Hey, there's my, uh, There's my spare uh, hubcap. Beauty. I don't know if you can see that in there beyond the mess nest, but it's in there. That's always a good find. A uh, little bee's nest we got in here too. Let's 
spare tire, and it looks like some other parts. Beauty! Well guys, one of the, uh, the straps broke off here when I was transporting the car, apparently. I didn't see this until now, so there's really two ways to look at this. Uh, one is, it's unfortunate that the strap broke, and you can get stressed out about it. Two, the car's here, the strap's broken, and now you have less work to do because it's already off. So always try and see the positive side of things. Okay guys, so as you've seen, I got the uh, 64 Impala. She's off the trailer now, really easy job. You know, you just set it up, and you just kind of push them off into the woods. Um, you know, just make sure you got some kind of rubber tires or something there so when they stop suddenly, it doesn't damage anything. But really quick and easy, she's easy to unload. Uh, she's off the trailer now, so what I'll do is I'll just do a quick walk around video guys, or video to show you guys, uh, now that I can see everything that's kind of uh, wrong with it. And uh, just kind of go over the car, kind of give you my ideas on it. Uh, if you got any 64 Impalas there too, you know, leave me some comments down below. It's always nice to see uh, who else is building the same kind of car there or who has the other cars, the, the same ones I got there too. So uh, let's turn this camera around and check, the, uh, check out the 64 Impala. <laughs> guys this is it here the 64 impala i just picked up that was in the original video from back in the spring so uh, yeah let's start with the engine bay here and check it out let's get that unlatched so i was thinking probably do one of those uh will it run videos with it and uh check huh well i guess uh, i guess i won't be doing that we ain't got no motor or transmission in this but uh yeah well, we already know the answer, guys. It, uh, it's not going to run at this point. We've got no motor transmission. So, uh, yeah, well, I guess that solves that. She ain't running. But uh, as you can see here, original car was white. Uh, she probably would have looked really nice in that white color at one point in time. Uh, more than likely, the car is probably a 283 or a 327 car. Uh, I'd have to go over the numbers and take a look there, too. Uh, I know there's a V badge on the side. I'm going to assume that might be for a 327 car, but uh, just go over the numbers, double check it, and take a, take a little read up on it to find out uh, what exactly would have been in here at one point in time. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, the, that's, that's something disappointing. Yeah, I guess she's not going to run, guys, so I can't do that video. All right, well, anyway, I'll put the hood down, and uh, let's uh, take a look at the exterior of the car. So this is it here, as you can see for the front end of the car. Uh, the bumper's in pretty decent shape. Uh, Three-piece bumper's in good shape. There is a little, you know, some small little dents here and there, but you know, it's not so bad. Uh, this section's in good shape as well. The grill's in nice shape. It's not dent or twisted. Uh, the 1C uh, piece here on the headlight's kind of damaged. Emblem can be changed out. That's pretty quick. There's a little bit of dings here too, but nothing too significantly bad. Uh, this one here is 
that's that's damaged a little bit though i guess uh the hood emblem's nice uh that trim is all in good shape uh hood's in nice shape there too there's no crinks or uh wrinkles or nothing in the hood go over here to the uh driver's side uh fender here you can see uh, it's got a little bit of rust down in here uh, they make the patch panels for these and i think they're really cheap there too so not too worried about this section here at all um these are the uh mud flat i might keep these probably not though uh just i'm, I'm gonna take those off uh get rid of those for sure um but you know a little bit more damage down here um you can see a little bit more rot through but that's not too bad like i said they make the whole quarter well, you can get the whole front fenders for this car or you can get the patch panels i think it's all relatively uh pretty cheap the trim is all all here and it looks to be in pretty decent shape other than this section here where it uh was dented a bit uh they make that trim you can get pretty much for this whole entire car i think you can get pretty much all the pieces pretty much brand new on this thing uh when you go down here too to the car uh, this is what I was talking about there the other day when I washed it. Uh, I lost some more of the vehicle here uh, up in this section. A nice chunk I, you know, I got washed off over here yesterday too. But uh, I'll take a look at the door. The door looks to be, it was probably damaged here at one point in time. Probably good. So this would probably have to come off. Hammer and dolly straighten it up there, right? But uh, the rocker panel doesn't seem to be in too terrible shape. Probably just that little section right over here though right where all that rust is <laughs> is uh probably the worst bit of it right but i think if i get a new quarter panel for this it's going to come up to this section here anyway and from here here over looks to be in pretty decent shape uh this quarter panel like i was saying um you know unfortunately it did fall off uh when i went to go pick it up it was laying there um but that's probably because it was really something horribly done to that that was not too good so anyway probably end up replacing this entire quarter panel or at least just the half section here from there to the bottom looks to be about it same here at the back i'm assuming you know you, you can see here too they got uh, uh little pop rivets of some kind so they obviously did some kind of repair to the car at one point in time i'm gonna probably end up just getting a either a new quarter panel for it or just like a half section like i said they're not too bad not too hard to come by uh, underneath the frame looked to be pretty decent. You got your typical rust and stuff for these cars, but other than that, though, it's pretty good shape. The roof is nice. It's got a beautiful roof on this thing. No damage, no nothing in the roof. All the trim around the glass is pretty good. There's one tiny ding over here, uh, if you can catch it right there. But other than that, that's about it. <laughs> uh, when you get here to the to the deck lid. Or the trunk or whatever you like to call it deck lid deck deck lid trunk uh this looks to be the only section that's been we actually no you know what it's been worked on over here too so uh once that's sanded down sandblasted you can kind of see it doesn't look to be in terrible shape though rear bumper is in pretty decent condition here too no major dings other than this uh one little section right here it's been dinged out but uh yeah not not terrible pretty good uh, I do know where there's a ton of parts cars for this thing here too. I think I know off the top of my head where there's at least at least four or five 64 Biscaynes or Bel Air four-door cars. So the parts for this would be pretty easy if I choose to get used parts. But then again, like the new the new panels for this car, they're not very much. Um, you you can probably get I could probably get all the new panels I need to get for this car, probably three thousand dollars or less. Like realistically. Uh, I don't think they're terribly that expensive. I'd have to double check it though and take a look, of course. But uh, from when I had a 64 four door hardtop and I was looking at parts, I don't remember them being as as expensive as, say, my uh, 58 that's in the shop over there. So you get around here to the passenger side quarter panel. Uh, once again, you can kind of see here too that this is a little bit more in rough shape uh, when we got pieces like this sticking around up in the top section. So I'm going to assume here too, you can see again, they did, they, someone tried to do some patchwork here. So uh, if I'm seeing that like I, I, like I am right now, I probably end up getting a full quarter panel or something like that again for this car. Or if it's sandblasted, once it's sandblasted, of course, then you can see what's really underneath all this. 
And if that's really the only section, then I don't really need a whole quarter panel. I can just get the, the half section or whatever, right? Um, totally torn apart again. Uh, actually, you know what? I am missing one little piece of trim here. Um, probably definitely fell off or something like that when the car started getting deteriorated like this. But, uh, you know, once again, whatever. Uh, you can get the whole whole trim kit for this. When I had a four-door hardtop 64 Impala, I think the car, I think the entire the entire side trim for this car uh, in a 64 four-door hardtop model, which is more parts, of course, I think it only ran me about five hundred dollars or something like that for the for the entire side trim on the whole car. Actually, you know what? That was for the side trim, and then that piece that goes on the the roof. Or sorry, that's the roof. This would be the front hood. Yeah, the front hood. That that front hood piece. Uh, that's the piece I was trying to talk about. But uh, yeah, I think for that this and actually the uh, the cove trim on the back. I think it was about five hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, that was Canadian too. So um, yeah, not too much at all, right? Same kind of damage here on the front fender, on the passenger side. Um, oops, oops. Yeah, that's uh, it's gonna need a little bit of work. I'm pretty sure that, like I said, they have the whole replacement piece for this. It shouldn't be that much. Or even a brand new fender, I think is only a couple hundred bucks, maybe $300 or something like that, brand new. Um, same here, she's pretty rough down there, but the main thing for me when I'm doing stuff like this, as long as I got a good solid roof, um, you know, that's pretty much, I'd say, especially on a car like this, like I was saying, everything you can pretty much buy brand new from uh, Classic Industries. Classic Industries does uh, deal with Impalas. They don't deal with Chevelles, but they do deal with the Impala model. And they've got pretty much everything brand new. Uh, Bob's Impalas is another one. I think they... Uh, they're still, I forgot if, if Bob's and Powell's is not around. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Bob's and Powell's is around no more. Uh, Eckler Chevrolet is the other one who's got, an, I know, an abundance of uh, Impala parts that you can get for these cars. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty much the exterior of the car. And, you know, I, I'm like, yeah, the baby blue color kind of looks nice on this thing. I don't mind it at all. Um, trying to think of some colors. I like the, I kind of like to paint this, uh, uh, maybe like a cobalt candy blue or something like that I think would be a really nice striking color on this car uh, which I think would look really nice on it uh, I'll have to take a look through uh, I paint with all House of Color so I'll have to go through some House of Color catalog and take a look at the paint and check that out and see what I think would look really nice on this car but uh, before I get to this one I got a couple other ones in the shop that I'm going to do first and now, now I'll take you around show you the interior of the car pretty nice interior wise like it's only really realistically missing the rear seat here um just the bottom part here too and i've already found that for like a hundred bucks uh but you know all the interior trim is here uh you know even the even the visors are here too right so the visors are here uh for the dash it's missing the radio but it's on the floor so that's good uh this also has 193 or this has 93,000. 882 uh, kilometers or miles. I'm going to assume that's 193,000, just judging by the uh, the wear that's on that brake pedal there. Could be 193,000, might be 293,000, um, but it's definitely it's definitely rolled over by looking at the the pedal here. The floors, you know, just by taking a look here, they're going to need some replacement for sure. But once again, the floor pans for this car, they're not much at all, and you can get the entire floor for this car. But you know it's got more, it's got all the interior parts that you pretty much need. Uh, even the door panels are still intact, uh, front and rears. Uh, you know steering wheels it's all cracked and whatever, right? But it's still here. And uh, yeah, I think the only thing it's missing like three things in here really. These little knobs here for the quarter window, both sides, and uh, yeah, someone took the uh, the lighter there. That's about the only piece that's missing on this thing other than the carpet, but good thing that's not in here because it smells more terrible than it does already, right? But it's got that nice old car smell to it, so. But yeah, so guys, this is pretty much it there. Oh, yeah, so this is also a Canadian-made car there too. Uh, the VIN tag says GM of Canada inside it, so. 
All right, guys, so thanks a lot for sticking around to the end of the video. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. And if you're working on a 64 Impala or any classic Chevs or any classic cars for that matter, you know, type them down in the comments section below. Let me know what you're working on. It's always good with the, uh, to connect with people who are building classic and custom cars. So, guys, remember, if it's not Raglan, it's not custom. Uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.